The colorless green ideas sleep furiously. Middle, middle, upper class black family. We also had, you um, know, some TV. What, what you call uh, camcorders and shit. My family was far from middle to upper. What? Like whatever that fucking social thing is. You know, I was. I've just been. So I'm like, I'm quite about the series though. Oh, so um, you know, I was, I've just been, so I'm like, I'm quite an avid collector of uh, photo books in particular, from yeah. especially from South African photographers like uh, Ernest Cole, David Goldblatt, Andrew yeah. Shavamu. Jeez, my name, name, name one. I probably have looked or found a book of theirs, but it extends yeah. outside of that. So I just, because I, I, I've been actively trying to find black photographers that are not those guys but who can be our generation's uh, version of telling our narratives in a way that's unique to the way we exist and live. Sure. Um, So I started, I, I mean I picked up a camera first at like age nine the story goes uh there was an uncle but you know how like everyone's an uncle when you're black he's just he's just like a friend of my grandfather's i guess who just you know he was around a lot he drank a lot but he took really good photographs and he was the only one in the hood for miles you know follow him around with his gear because i was really really you know curious about like and he got his stuff um, from the war. He used to like document war for black yeah. soldiers. Um, that's crazy. And that's that's kind of what began his drinking habits. Yeah. Um, when I was growing up I knew of photographs but I had never imagined myself making the images or yeah. documenting and all of that stuff up until I was in matric and then I started getting interested in um, the people who, who who make movies like behind the scenes of a production team and what happens um, when one uh, puts together a movie and I remember I'd al- always be interested in the, the names of the people who, who, when the credits go up after yeah. a movie or a production. Uh, so so I from that I decided okay cool I really like film let me um, register to get into a film school or film course. These are the instructions for dealing with a woman during her menstrual period. Anything on which the woman lies or sits on during the time of her period will be unclean. Any bed she lies on during that time will be unclean. There is a thing called a uterus. It sheds itself every 28 days or so, or in my case, every 23 days. I've always been a rule breaker. That's the anatomy part of it. Uh, I think ooh, my earliest memory of deciding I could actually do film was after watching, not after watching Love and Basketball, because I've watched and rewatched it, but mainly yeah. after discovering that the director was a black woman. Uh, yeah. Gina Prince Bybert kind of changed the game for me. I figured that if a black woman is doing it, then okay, there's a chance for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, not usually the filmmaker's recommendation of uh, a film, but yeah, that's yeah. that was my impression. <laughs> well, I had no access to resources. <laughs> I think the next time I picked up a camera was in varsity, um, second year, because uh, a friend of mine had a camera, and she asked if I had ever handled a DSLR, and I said, oh, "What's a DSLR?" <laughs> so. <laughs> 
So yeah, um, I just played around with that and um, yeah, she figured I had a natural eye, so. Made of moonlight magic and macabre will make you know the blood. We gonna get it all over the sheets and car seats. We gonna do that. We gonna introduce you to our insides, period. And if you are as unprepared as we sometimes are, it'll get all over you and leave a forever stain. <laughs> And I just realized, you know, a lot of them don't have the means and the resources and the, and the connections to create photo books, zines, any of that stuff that needs uh, a lot of resource. And I thought about what I could do to kind of chronicle and archive these people in their prime because. You know, retrospectively, people are going to look back and go, Hey man, uh, Andy Lebuka, Justice Mugeli, Cole and Lelu, whoever uh, the person may be, did some notable work, but we don't have anything that chronicles their formative yeah. years or like the come up years or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought, well, let me use the resource, I, the resource I have and the thing that I know, which is the internet and, you know, photography, whether yeah. it's motion picture or still. Um, so I've been interviewing and, and kind of setting up time to go visit uh, a handful of photographers hopefully more and just kind of, yeah. kind of chronicle who they are their process where they grew up projects they've worked on that they loved projects that they worked on that they hated uh, failures successes you know just like a, a, a hopefully a, like a, a snapshot if you will of who they are right now and the things that have made them and what they want to do in the future uh, and then it's just like an, a series that I was going to do of oh, five to ten photographers uh, of of this of this kind of like YouTube online yeah. thing, but it's kind of like abstract in the way that I recorded. But my mom somehow like managed to buy a um, a camcorder for the family and and like a point and shoot digital thing nice. camera. So. Yeah, and it was exactly as you described it. Like, it was just around the crib, and I was like, mm. you know what I mean? <laughs> and it first started out with me, like, um, uh, you know, stealing the thing, like, on odd days and shit. And then, like, I got to ask her, like, yo, can I use this shit since no one is fucking using it? And since my mom is my mom, and she's the coolest, coolest person on earth, she was like, yeah, sure didn't have that shit, but please take care of it. So, yeah. And then that's that's how it kind of all began. Yeah, so like before that though, um, rap niggas, rap also like, uh, yeah. they, um, my cousin, my cousin's dad, so my uncle is a photographer. Well, he's an academic who likes to take pictures, right? And then he's always had like, I think they, I don't, I'm not sure if it's always been there, but at some point, like during the early 2000s, like they, they had a camcorder and I was always fascinated like about this shit, you know what I mean? Like, and like, cause that, that, that you had to have like the, the, the mini tape to record yeah. on. And then we'd like just off the bat, like just record like recording sessions, but like very like it wasn't, you know what I mean? It was when it was there or like yeah. when yeah. the more appro- the more accurate thing would be t- to say when he was allowed to use it. You know what I mean? Um So how so- old were you? That was like early 2000s, so I was like 15. Uh, no way. Uh, no, shit, I was, I was 12. You know, niggas will be coming to you on some, you know, spark free, and then you have to bless it, you know, come up with a script, you have to bless it. So, you know, that's where you, you, you sharpen your skills, so to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah.
this shit that I speak with Sharp shoot execution of all concepts I'm all about free delivery Catch your fire, catch your doorstep I'm all a squad green when I approach my clientele what? I was not possessed when I came up with this shit dog I was high as hell So be careful when you step away, never think that you're tough Woo! You ever good against them, but against, against me you're not good, good enough So he was very old when I met him already. So yeah. Anyway, um, I think he took a liking to my curiosity and he let me play around with his stuff and yeah. taught me how to develop film. So live. Um, and it's the only thing I've ever been good at. Like I was good at, uh. Like I used to, I was very, very confident in my likes. I spoke a lot and yeah. uh, played soccer really well. I played provincial football, but I got hurt and I couldn't play anymore. Mm. And so, yeah, my, my, my love for photography came from just curiosity from this other guy's gear. So he died and I inherited all of that stuff and people still needed photos in the hood, you know? Yeah. And so they were like... I don't know, just a <laughs> little kid. <laughs> so yeah, I was there. Essentially, you were an like, apprenticeship. Yeah, literally like making like five rand, taking photos of people's weddings and graduations. I wasn't very good, but that's all they had. You know? yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll say 12. So mm. the age 12, age 12 was when everything changed because we moved to Joburg when I was like, yeah six and we'd be up and down I, I grew up in Poch, sorry Pochestrum when I was like six and when I turned 12 my parents got divorced so I couldn't really focus on photography you know mm. so for a while I didn't have a I didn't have access to dark rooms and cameras and when I did I would just they'd break because maintenance was expensive yeah so I picked up a camera again in earnest when I was 21. Um, it was my third year of university and I was studying journalism mm. and I specialized in photojournalism. Because like I said, it was the only thing I was ever good at. I really sucked at school. Um, I hated university. I hated school. But I really Where loved taking photos. I went to Rhodes... Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, photojournalism, got my degree, and then I didn't want to be a photojournalist. I, journalism was, oh, no, it's, I mean, you can tell now, it's a complete dog show. So I, I think my... My curiosity helped, so I was confident. I was a lot more confident with a camera in my hand than I was without it. Mm. Um, and I've, I, because I shoot people a lot, I've noticed that when you're confident with it in you in your hands, they tend to relax. Yeah. And you kind of become invisible. Um. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, my white counterparts tend to have a lot more invisibility because you expect them to have a camera because you can afford yeah. one. Um, and the only time the only time I got shy and nervous was when I was around other photographers. Yeah. Um, it's a very... And I don't know if, like, other professions do this to each other, but 
filmmakers and photographers tend to just yeah, subconsciously dick swing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my queerness is also it's a it's a great like cushion mm. because because I avoided photojournalism and photojournalism requires you to tell uh, truths, not stories so much. Yeah. Um, and a lot of a lot of the stuff that I was going to take photos of was like trauma, you know. Yeah. Um, so, 2014 happened, and everyone was woke, and roads was falling, and so I took it as an opportunity to <laughs> go the other way, <laughs> and and document like joy, because everything around us was falling apart. Uh, so, so I from that I decided, okay, cool. I really like film. Let me um, register to get into a film school or film course. And I landed up at Pentec. I yeah. remember my second my second choice was photography, just off of that because I thought it maybe linked itself closely with with yeah. filmmaking. But then I landed up in a photography class. I didn't ask questions. I remember being this timid person. This was like. So after, right after my trick, yeah, I think 2009, yeah. And I was in this class, I've never touched a camera before. I only know of what a, a camera makes, which is uh, an image, and these images I keep on seeing, um, family albums, and yeah. so forth. So I spent that year um, at Pentec, but then I dropped out, I was like, ah, I don't even have the resources to do this, so let me like just jump ship and try to do this in another way. Plus, when Bale Gunas was quite a design, I was like, I don't think I'm up for it for, for the loan as well that comes with um, getting the skill set. But I kept on, I uh, used um, YouTube as a teacher, I attended a few short, short um, courses. Uh, yeah. There was one that I took with City Varsity and they taught me um, camera work and lighting. And then I guess from, from that, the passion sort of came and I sort of understood the medium and what it meant for me. Um, I'm holding a camera and the power that comes with that. And then I think the type of photography that I like over, over time and over the years, as I'm like consuming other people's work, as I'm learning the medium itself, um, I sort of found and stumbled across um, documentary photography. And I think for me, I resonated with that a lot more. And it's been my strength since then. I try other stuff, but I always find myself like um, uh, uh, drawn back towards the e documentary photography. Um, I actually used to hate cameras and, and taking photos and being in photos as a kid and growing up. But what I yeah. did love was um, I always used to love writing, reading, and drawing. So comics were kind of like my bastion, uh, safe place to go to. Uh, growing up in yeah. this weird place where, like, what is that old uh, sweatshirt line? I was too black for the white kids, too white for the black. Because I yeah. existed in this weird dichotomy of, like, uh, starting out in the hood and going to schools in the hood and then getting opportunities to go to these Model C schools and then coming yeah. back to the hood and then people going, ah, this dude is extra, you're different, you're watching yeah. white people TV. So, like, that became like you a... You went to Timbisa, yeah? Yeah, in Timbisa, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lebuweng and in Duluini. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, like, comics became like an, like an outlet and anime and stuff like that. Um, because I could, like, you know, oftentimes, even, like, something like the X-Men is about these outsiders that yeah. try to find their place. But I mean, so I used to like draw and like read and like consume all of, all of that stuff all the time. And what I realized retrospectively um, is, you know, drawing is just kind of like a, a long exposure photograph. Like it's just a really slow way to capture people's likeness and to capture the human imagination. Um, mm -hmm. And throughout history before the, the advent of uh, photography and the, and the camera, artists were quintessentially photographers you know doing still lives and doing portraits of people so i think without knowing it i was always drawn to 
people and, and, and the medium kind of evolved and changed over time. Um, and the way I found photography, incidentally, was probably around 19, no, maybe like 2021. Uh, it was when Tumblr was like blowing up and like Tumblr was a thing. Um, and I made my first Tumblr. And, I, and I, at first I was curating images from all over the world and mm. like, you know, Street Etiquette and Tommy Ton and all kinds of like random ass places. And I would just like amalgamate yeah. these things. Um, but the more that I did that, and I think it's the same with with writing the more you consume you stop mm. being like a consumer and something in you kind of impels you to want to like uh you spew or vomit these things out of you like they just come out of you yeah. eventually um and that's what happened yeah. with with photography like um you know after seeing all of these initial uh images that i curate and from all over the world uh, i started yeah. to realize wait number one a lot of these images i'm seeing are of white people uh, and there's not many people that look like me, and there's certainly no images that I can see of South Africa and the South Africa I live in. There were a few yeah. photographers here and there uh, at the time, but they all had this uh, very Afrocentric, like daishiki, animal print patterns uh, thing going. And I was like, so I just started borrowing uh, a camera from a friend of mine called Silas Lekwati, uh, and he um, had this like Zoom old school as camera and I would take that yeah. and like reach out to people that I'd found on Tumblr and would like meet in places like Bramfontein and uh, Newtown and like the early days of Maboneng like mm. to, to give you an extent of like how long ago this was a uh, street cred hadn't even started it was like maybe a year <laughs> or two before street cred even Banna banna sabahun. These are not our men. Sike wambita musadi wahao. I am not your woman. Sike wambita le rato lahao. I am not your love. I am more than the feeling. Sike wambita mama watle wahao. Le fatse lahao kapalona lo hudimo lahao. I am not yours to swim in. I am not yours to live in. I will never be yours to die in. Banna balikile to claim me. Hunketa le ha halabon. Babutiba haunganak. Sikewe hansetza natina. Bonta teba. Girata sutwana sekang we natina. Bashangana ban sepi sitzing lagato la hutwa hubadim. Bomampudi, Mitswale, Baruti. These are the men I have had to protect myself from. These are the men from whom Kile Katamea Hupata, the wholeness of my womanness. The same men who will want me to believe in the potential of their goodness. The same men who will claim to love Bomele Bahata Babona, but fail to value the crevices of my brown body. Kiutule Musariye Mongare. Onaya mo sinseng di thots. Omo fala gat ole borrele di hufeta kamo ha o wakilenga uka gati. Kiutule mo nae mo ngare. Ma ba na ba hai. Ha na tu kelo ya homo team. Unchebile kama song ati si te se fasho ya andre taka mulo mo wa hai o meti ke mathe hore. Masari e nu ke wak. Pebele ere masari ha na matla hudima melo wa hai. Ya nang le matla hudima on. Fascinating. How they pick and choose what would allow them to strip a woman who fichella masapua hai ilo onafela asa let's in kayen, demonizing the sacred space mo le rat ole tobala no dine di fumana hating. Rilibasadi, we are grieving for our bodies before it's too late. Retirate la miliaro na retepilo roko duwa ena hai no refichel. Akela rejoete ba naba hesu. Um, but I know that in high school, we used to just have fun shooting on our phones. We used to have fun shooting um, music videos. So we'd take a song and just yeah. have our own little uh, rendition of it. Um, so yeah. I think seeing how that, how much fun we had with that, and, you know, it didn't look perfect, but I mean, yeah. 
the fun associated with it is what made me interested in really pursuing this thing. So as much as you might get discouraged in varsity because of, you know, obviously institutional matters, um, I think what keeps you going is, is the fact that you have some, you, you know, you have something to say. Um, you watch TV and you are probably not impressed with, well, with me personally, I wasn't really impressed with the stories that were going yeah. on. Um, and I felt that there was just a lot left unsaid about black women's experiences. We don't always have to see the, uh, you know, just specifically, yeah, yeah. Re- repeated. So um, I just felt strongly that I had something to say. And it was just my, I just had to make it a point to develop that visual language and make sure I do that. So, yeah. Representation and we refer to ourselves as bodies and all of that shit. So I decided yeah. to um, take document joy as opposed to that militant, radical, often violent wokeness that was happening around me. Because when I was in my first year, so I'm 19, this is 2010, I first yeah. picked up Zanella Moholi's photo book. Oh, shit. And I mean, it's a brilliant photo book. It's obviously brilliant, but I just felt so... felt like I was consuming a lot of pain, a lot of pain as I paged through it. But, you know, it was the first step in representation because that's the first time I saw, you know, masculine women being documented, like, honestly, you know, by a, by a prolific photographer and she probably made the same decision at the time to be like this is what i want to photograph i'm tired of photographing yeah. us as bodies maimed and you know yeah. get a portrait you know it moved from that and then like when i got my own shit i was like man like you know this traffic shit is cool but no one is recording the homies and now like i'll just a lot of the shit that i grew up with <laughs> started out as jokes you know what i mean like um yeah a lot of like fucking those kids who were skating in in california in in the 60s didn't they just saw an empty pool and they just went you know what i mean yeah. i was like kick it whatever they didn't know that it'll get to this yeah. was culture is a thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, just like other things, man. Like a lot of stuff that 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 I know was like either a joke or it, the people rebelling against something. You know what I mean? Um, I found that I was drawn a lot more to um, people who who sort of I don't know, man. I don't know how to explain this, but it's let me just say I was interested in telling um, stories. Whether whether it's mine or yours, and I yeah. think for me, documentary photography stood stood for that and allowed me to to in, interact with people still, but then also have this this access that I think I wouldn't have if it wasn't for my camera. Mm. So if say I want to talk about I don't know um, that, I don't know whatever topic there is there to talk about, not yeah. only do I have answers for that, but I think a camera allows for one to to access points and conversations and spaces that that um, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to if you didn't have the camera. And I always say this that I think I'm lucky because of the camera that I'm able to access some spaces. And, and that was before, like I had the opportunity to travel. I'd never been on a plane uh, at that time, um, yeah. but yeah. So I started taking these photographs, and then. Uh, incidentally, some brands started to notice, and the first brand to really notice, I have to think now, but it was either Asics, uh, Mr. Mm. Price, or Woolworths, but I'm leaning towards 
Mr. Price. Yeah. And uh, we did a campaign with um, TT and uh, uh, MX Blouse. Yeah. Uh, at the time, he was just uh, a stylist, kind of just doing doing their thing. So yeah, yeah we did that campaign as well at the time, no? Writing and like the blogs, yeah. yeah, blogs were a big thing. So that's yeah. kind of where it started. Um, and then, yeah, I just kind of wanted to start it to chronicle people that I thought were stylish and look cool. Uh, and that's where even the name started to come from, because in my mind, I'd seen that, like, everyone may not be an artist per se, but we all have a form of expression through our clothes. And, like, every morning, at some point, you're naked and you look at your wardrobe and you decide how to present yourself to the world. And to me, that was, like, a form of, like, expressionism. Um, and hence, I, that's where the name of the expressionist came from, because I was like, OK, yeah. everyone doesn't necessarily write or sing or rap or make beats or photograph, but everyone gets dressed and takes some some relative pride in how yeah. they dress. So I'm going to be the expressionist and just kind of let people dress and chronicle yeah. their, their interpretation of themselves. That's why my yeah. Instagram looks the way it does. I want to, like, put some work in. Which which has worked for me so far. Um, mm. But uh, I remember like rocking the daisies three years ago, four years ago or something. I yeah. ex- I took I went with a journalist friend of mine, and she just said, you know, take photos of the place. We'll publish on the Monday after we get back. And I just deliberately only took photos of black people and queer people. Yeah. Like people of color and queer people like the, at Rocking the Daisies. Yeah. So that, you know, that's my, that's what I have to offer. 